uh, limiting reactant problems. So to explain to you how a limiting reactant problem works, I'm going to go back to uh, that example that I used last time of making a cheese sandwich. Because we can, we can understand that, right? Two pieces of bread and one piece of cheese makes a sandwich. And we looked at this last time. And I said, okay, guys, you've got six pieces of bread. How many sandwiches can you make? And you said three because you knew that I put two pieces of bread on a sandwich. All right, what if I have six pieces of cheese? How many sandwiches can you make? Six, because there's a piece of cheese on each sandwich. Now, a limiting reactant problem works like this. What if I tell you that you have six breads and six cheeses? How many sandwiches will that make? It will only make three, right? Because six breads makes three sandwiches. This would make three sandwiches. Six cheeses would make six sandwiches. Which one is the right answer? The smaller amount of product that you can produce is the right answer for that equation. Why? Because I'm going to run out of the bread. I'm going to have cheese left over, right? And I'm going to run out of bread. So in this case, a small amount of product, that's my answer. I'll make three sandwiches. And I'm going to have no bread left. That's my limiting reactant. That's what I'm going to run out of. So now we need to apply that concept to chemical equations and moles and comparing moles of stuff. So let's look at this equation. Carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas <clears throat> will combine <coughs> to make methanol, which is CH3OH. You need to balance that equation because you always have to start with a balanced equation. What if I... So according to this equation, calculate uh, the moles of methanol produced when seven moles of carbon monoxide reacts with five moles of hydrogen. Let me get recording going. In this problem, it, uh, the writing says you've got seven moles of carbon monoxide and you have five moles of hydrogen. So I have to decide which one of those is going to be my limiting reactant because the amount of product form is based on the limiting reactant. Which one's going to am I going to run out of first? There's a couple of ways to decide limiting reactant. One way is to kind of do what we did over here with our bread and cheese. To take each one, what I'm given, six breads, well, how many sandwiches would that make? To take six cheeses, how many sandwiches would that make? And then compare your answers of three and six, which one's smaller, that's the answer to the question, and that you can backtrack and tell what your limiting reactant is, okay? That's one way to do it, and that's the way most people like to do it because it's, it's easiest. It's kind of a concrete answer. So what does that mean I'm going to do here? It means I'm going to take the seven moles of the carbon monoxide, and I'm going to use that number to calculate, all right, how many moles of methanol will that make? And then I'm going to start with five moles of hydrogen, and I'm going to use that number to start with how many moles of methanol will that make, and then I'm going to compare those two answers. Does that make sense? Y'all can see that the carbon monoxide to the methanol, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. That's really easy, but I'm still going to set it up to show you what you're doing. You're saying that one mole of carbon monoxide 
And I, it's one because the balanced equation, carbon monoxide has a coefficient of one, will make one mole of methanol. And why is that one one? Because it's a one to one. The balanced equation says one CO makes one methanol. And so my answer here would be seven moles of methanol. Do y'all see how I've gone from CO <coughs> to CH3O? Okay. Okay, so there's the calculations with the five moles of hydrogen. Lydia. Yes. I put two moles of hydrogen on the bottom because hydrogen has a coefficient of two. On the mole-mole step, y'all, and in both of these that I've got set up, it's a mole-mole step. That is the only step that you use the coefficient on. If you look at the one we still have on the board that we were wrapping up from last time, well, that's not a good example because everything had, that we used had a coefficient of one. But when you're using these mole-gram steps, when it's a mole to gram or gram to mole, always use one there. Only use the coefficients when you're doing moles of something over moles of something else. So, which one of these reactants is the limiting reactant. And when you answer that, you're also answering which one of those answers is the right answer. Because do you guys see, one problem said we make seven moles of methanol, the other said we make two and a half moles. Those both can't be right. Which one's the right answer? The smallest one is the right answer. The smallest one always tells you what the limiting reactant was. What was the limiting reactant? That's what you answered. Yes, hydrogen is the limiting reactant. 